Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we're starting our new module. This is the NERVES project. We're going to be working with hardware. I hope you have a good time with us today. So today's video is going to be about getting a quick win. And so what we're going to do is actually just take a simple Raspberry Pi and start with the circuits project and burn it onto a micro SD card. And then we're going to take that card and try to shell into it and see what types of debugging tools are available. Now, I think it's really important to get quick wins when you're working with hardware, because if you try to do too much at once, it can be a pretty frustrating project. But if instead you try to build tiny piece by tiny piece, you can get a lot done in a short period of time and you can feel encouraged all along the way. And that's an excellent thing. So let's get started. Before we get too far into this project, I kind of want to show you what my shopping list looks like. So the first thing that you need is a micro SD card. And I just had this one laying around. This was, this is a, a Kingston 32 bit one. But the, the key is that this card, you could see that it has a little slot there that the microcontroller goes into. And the reason that I have that is that I have this compatible slot on my existing Hutu multi-port. So the second thing that I have is a USB-C to micro USB connector. And that's really helpful for the MacBook Pro because it, it allows me to connect you know, directly without, without a whole lot of interface. And I find that um, just kind of cutting out the middleman when you're working with hardware is, is pretty, pretty helpful, right? And for this project, I'm using the Raspberry Pi Zero. They're cheap. They're, um, they, they have all the capabilities that we need to build the, the, um, the modules. And since, since a lot of hobbyists use them, it's pretty easy to find information about, about working with them. And they work, they'll work just fine for the NERFS projects. And what will happen is your micro SD card will fit right here. So as we get further into the NERVS ecosystem, one of the things that we'll do is work, work on burning our own SD cards from our own software projects. Um, but, but essentially, that's not where we are now. Now we're working on getting a few quick wins and learning how to use the tool chain. So I am in the Elixir Circuits Quick Start project, and that's one of the great projects by Frank Hunlith, um, who's one of the founders of NERVS. And we're gonna use this because it's going to allow us to burn some firmware to, to get our initial version of our Raspberry Pi um, set up um, kind, of, kind of complete. And so we'll talk about the hardware list in a second, but right now what I wanna talk about is the prerequisites for the software. So. We're going to use Elixir, um, Elixir 1.10, but this also works all the way through 1.11. If you update to 1.11, you need to make sure that you're using Erlang um, 23. So follow the versions um, pre pretty closely. And so we are going to need a um, micro SD card. We're gonna need a cable. So I'm using a lightning to micro USB cable on a MacBook Pro. So you want something that, that fits whatever system that you're running. And with a micro USB that'll plug into the Raspberry Pi, we'll look up that up in a second. I'm using firmware up, that's FWUP, and that will essentially write the micro SD card. And um, later on, uh, in, in a later video, we're going to actually build this project as well, which, which essentially is Hello World for hardware, which is kind of blinking an LED. Now, what we want to do with this particular version is just make sure that we can install that micro SD card and then kind of burn the firmware. Um, so here are the instructions for, for downloading the firmware, and, and you want to make sure you follow those pretty closely. So there's, a, there's an application, or there's a GitHub project that's right here and that's going to allow you to, to pull down the quick start information from for exactly for your, your project. And so since I'm using the Raspberry Pi, I'll be pulling the circuits quick, quick start down for that one. 
Um, so you'll want to make sure that you get the version for the Raspberry Pi that you're using. And so I'm going to skip the burn in this particular video and we'll we'll work on the burn in a later one just so we can kind of get get to the point where we have a quick win. But what you're going to do is download the firmware for your system. You're going to pull that down. You're, then you're going to issue this firmware up command with with your micro SD card connected to your computer in, in some way. So I'm using a um, just a an SD adapter that that just goes into a Hutu connector and, and into a, um, a Hutu multi port that that set, that accepts these adapters. And essentially all you're going to do is the firmware up to to call this to um, to burn the firmware. And it's going to ask you if you won't really want to erase the contents because you are. You're replacing everything on that disk. And then it's going to go very quickly. It's going to actually build that firmware project and um, drop it onto the card. So we're going to take a look at this a little bit in, in just a second. But um, but for now, let's go ahead and connect to um, and connect to our Raspberry Pi. And so to do that, we're going to use this SSH command that's defined right here. And really, we're, all we're going to do is SSH into um, circuits at nervous.local. And then the password is, um, is circuits, um, spelled just like this. And then we'll be able to interact with the Raspberry Pi remotely in an IEX session. And that's pretty cool. So before we do that, let me kind of show you what my setup looks like. Okay, so here's what's happening now. I've got my computer and I'm connected to my Hutu device. And that has the, um, the micro SD adapter card. And it's just in this little, this little slot here. And you can see there's a little slot in here and the card's not there. In fact, it's actually in the Raspberry Pi. So here's the Raspberry Pi Zero, and this is the SD card. And there's one, two um, micro USB ports, and we're gonna use this one. And we're going to basically attach it with a cable that's lightning on this end, and it's a micro USB on this end. And so the micro USB is going to go in here, and this is just gonna plug right in like that. So that's in. And you can see we, we got the LED, so this is booting. Um, that's a good sign. And in a second, we're going to actually shell into this. And we'll talk about exactly how we got to the place um, or how we specify the, the name and the password for the system that's going to be in the firmware that, that we actually pushed out to the Raspberry Pi. But again, all I did to set this up was go through the setup process with a firmware burn. And we're going to go through that step in another video. So, so you'll be able to see exactly what that looks like. Today, the goal is to get a quick established win where we're not even gonna to try to blink an LED or anything like that. We just want to make sure that we can talk to, to the Raspberry Pi and that we can use some of the, the tools that are already built in. So let's do that next. All right, so this is what we're going to do here. We're actually going to type this command and we're going to type it into the right into the shell. It doesn't matter where. And as long as we have SSH enabled and as long as the system that we're connecting to, the Raspberry Pi, has been burned from this circuits quick start project, I should be able to shell directly in by use of that cable that, that we kind of plugged in earlier. The lightning to micro USB cable that's, go, that's flowing from the computer to the Raspberry Pi into that micro USB port. And we should be able to shell directly in 
and specify the ID and password. So let's do that now. We're here in the, the shell and I should be able to drop this command in. Again, this is SHH and that's to create a remote shell. The name of the system is circuits at nerves.local. Now, whatever project that you're building with nerves, you're actually always gonna be going to nerves.local nerves or normally you will. And, um, and you're going to set up your system name. This is the name of the Raspberry Pi. This has been already pre-configured in the Circuits Quick Start project. Okay, so I'm going to let this fly, and I'm going to type C-I-R-C-U-I-T-S. Okay, so let's see what just happened here. So we're going to um, SHH into the server. Here's the password, and we're booting right into Interactive Elixir with Elixir 111, one, which is kind of cool, right? And it says Toolshed is imported, and just like any other Elixir module, we can get help for that Toolshed, and we'll do that in a second. And then we get a just a kind of nice Elixir logo here. And so this is the quick start for the circuits, right? So, so there are a couple of projects that are pre-built in this in this circuits project that you'll be able to see and, and edit. Now, when you use the logger, this doesn't work like a typical logger because we don't usually want the logs to flow rapidly um, through the screen and have too much data. So very often we want to be able to consume the log piece by piece because these traces can be pretty long. So there's something called a ring logger that allows me to work through the logger step by step. And the ring logger is, is an efficient way to kind of have a, a limited amount of memory where we can kind of see the, what's what's happening um, in real time. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at a tool shed like this. I'm gonna say H tool shed. And remember H is just a function. So this is the same as typing this. Okay, so this is all tool shed is, is basically a simple list of debugging tools for Raspberry Pi, right? So there are some commands that you can enter directly. Like for example, um, I can get a I can get a list, right? So there's live and releases. I could also get a whole directory tree, and there it is. Yeah. So this is really flowing by here. So, but in the releases, you could see that. There's a release 040, and this is the circuit's quick start release, right? And so this is effectively the compiled elixir. You can see that these are beam files. So all that is is compiled elixir. There's there's the cookie, and, and the cookie is basically not what you think. It's actually a small ID that enables security. So we're going to keep a clean value of that in here. And then, um, and then, so the rest of this is um, are just some of the some of the libraries that this is this is using, right? And so this is the whole directory structure uh, from the top to the bottom. Okay, let's actually take another look at some of the things that we could do. One of the things that we could do is get a list of all the modules that are loaded. Let's see, we have these commands to run basic Unix commands. This will um, print out NERVS kernel messages. This is actually the set of tools that I can use to debug hardware because it doesn't always come up like you expect it to, right? So one of the things that I really like is the ability to, um, to look at the modules, the kernel modules that have been loaded, right? So I can say LSMOD. And you can imagine that as I attach devices, there are various drivers for all these devices that have to be up and functioning correctly. And so this gives us some information about what's loaded. And I can compare this list to, against what I actually think is, is in the system. So what we have here is a pretty healthy list of debugging tools. And, and we actually have a whole working Elixir system we can interact with and I can actually write my own code here. So I could say def module greeting 
and have a great and this is going to say hello world I say greeter dot greet and it's going to give me hello world so we are actually working and and the next quick wins that we can get are building out some of the simple projects that are going to let us deal with with the world through our hardware so what we're actually going to do is build some projects that interact with the pins on our Raspberry Pi. So those represent the input and the output for this tiny computer. And they actually can, can share power um, that'll, that'll, for example, light up an LED. And I think that that project is going to be what's next. But we also need to take a quick step back to learn exactly how to burn the firmware in this circuits project. So we'll actually be going through these through, through this process so that we'll download the firmware for our system and then um, and then we'll kind of set things up, push the firmware, and then we'll make sure that that's working the way that we expect it is. So that's an excellent thing. I hope you're going to enjoy this working with hardware as much as I have. From Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning.